And we're back on Miki, and today we're talking about uh, what it is to be disillusioned with the church, meaning the body of Christ. Uh, Pastor Ray Pritchard of Keep Believing Ministries is my guest today. I highly, highly recommend that you check out keepbelieving.com. Maybe you have questions that won't be answered by the end of this program, or you have comments that you'd like to share. Uh, Pastor Ray not only welcomes that, but he hopes that you will go to keepbelieving.com. Pastor Ray, before we went to the break, we were talking about people who have been genuinely hurt within the church and have chosen to remove themselves from fellowship. What do you say to that? Genuinely, they've been hurt. I think if you're part of the church, you're gonna be hurt. Mm -hmm. the, the, the preacher is gonna say something that you don't like. And I was a pastor in local churches for 27 years and I made any number of mistakes in my pulpit ministry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people let me know about that. So, <laughs> so it's going to happen. Or more likely, somebody inside the church is going to let you down. They promised something. Mm -hmm. Or they said something about you. Or, you know, the Galatians 5 says, uh, stop biting each other or you are going to destroy each other. Wow. Well, yeah. there's no reason for Paul to say that unless there's a lot of biting going on uh, inside. I, I had a seminary professor who said, you know, he was training us to be pastors. You're going to be shepherds. He said, remember this, men, sheep bite. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. they don't just bite the pastor. They bite each other. So, Miki, let's understand it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you are in the best church in the world, you're going to have your feelings hurt from time yeah. to time. And there's, there's not going to be any getting around that this side of heaven. The question is not, will it happen? Because yes, it will happen. People will disappoint you. They'll let you down. Um, pastors will say one thing and do another. Uh, elders will say things to you and you'll wonder why they really said that. You may even feel that you've been misled by the elders of your own church. Yeah. What do you do then? Yeah. Well, all I can say is, if you withdraw from the church completely, you, you've hurt the church, mm -hmm. but you've also hurt yourself. And you've, you've put a roadblock in your own relationship with God because the Bible talks about the root of bitterness that can grow inside any one of us. Mm -hmm. So the issue is not, are there going to be problems? Well, where you got people, you got problems. That's right. So what are we going to do about it? That's really the question. Okay, well, now let's talk about this because there, there are going to be issues. There are going right. to be offenses that happen. But let's think about what Jesus said when he talked about if your brother offends you. Right. Now, this is, you know, even I think when you start to talk about this and you mention it, people kind of cringe and get a little anxious inside because uh -huh. the Bible says... I can actually you, feel it myself as we're, as we're going to discuss as it. As we're talking about and it. And I sure. feel that too. Yes. If your brother offends you, yeah. go to him, show him his fault. If he will not hear you, come back to him mm -hmm. with one, at the most two witnesses and so that everything can be established, right? right. And if it's successful, you've won your brother right. over. What in the world does that look like today? I think it means this, that when you are aware that there is a breakdown between you and another believer, don't do nothing. Okay. okay. We got to start there. Okay. Don't do nothing. There's a lot of things you can do, but don't say to yourself, this doesn't matter. Don't say to yourself, it has hurt my feelings, but I'm just going to, uh, it has breached the relationship, but I'm going to pretend it doesn't matter. I know the Bible does say in 1 Peter uh, 4, 8, love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put those two things together, this is, I think, what it means is that in the normal everyday course of life, sometimes people will say things or do things, and it's best just to overlook them. Small offenses yes. should just be overlooked. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't be going to each other a hundred times a day. You looked at me bad. You didn't say hi to me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You didn't wear, I, I don't like that shirt you're wearing yes. or, or, or yes. you know. It's to our glory to overlook an offense. That's right. Yes. It's, a, it's a good thing. So, yeah. so small things, oh, no marriage would ever survive if love didn't cover mm -hmm. a multitude of sins, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. What's true in marriage is true in the local church. So let's say that as a general principle, that small offenses 
need to be overlooked so we can live together. Yeah. But not everything is a small offense. Right. A right. lie, what you perceive as an act of dishonesty, uh, if you believe somebody has been spreading gossip about you. So slander, slander malice, okay. Right. At some point, you got to do something. And I, I think it, let me, let me tell you what you don't do. You don't put on your Facebook status. Oh, <laughs> come on, keep going <laughs> with that. That's right. You, you don't put it up on Facebook. Well, <laughs> this is what somebody said and I hate him for saying it. Or then all you've done is made things worse. Oh, that's right. That's that's not what the scripture is, right. is teaching. You right. don't make a spectacle of the offense or of the breach. In right. fact, the Bible clearly says the first option that's is right. you go to your brother that's right. just between you and him and talk about now, what happened. Now, does that mean face to face? I think face to face is good. That's that's the best and simplest way you can say to me, Ray, when you said that. And when you said it that way, I don't know what you meant, but that was deeply hurtful to me. Mm -hmm. If I know that, mm -hmm. if I care about you at all, I'm going to say, Miki, I am sorry. Or I was in a hurry and I was rushed. I wasn't even thinking about what I was saying, but will you forgive me? And if you forgive me, then it's over. That's right. And so then the responsibility is on that of the offended party to say, okay, that's right. I release you from that That's and we're right. good. Now, here's the scary valuable, uh, variable, okay. Pastor Ray. We don't know that the person to whom we go will immediately apologize or see that they've done anything wrong often, at all. Often, often they will deny having done yes, anything. Often. Yes. I've had that yes. happen, you know. Now, so, so is it okay for us to use that as an excuse to not uh, employ the scriptures, to not use the scriptures? Can we say, well, you know, they are known for being a hothead. So I'm just going to, I'm just not going to worry about it, you know, and I'll just tell my friend what they did because I need to, I need to get this out so that I can be healthy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but they're a hothead. Right. <laughs> okay. So you, you, you've really asked me two different questions. Yes, I have. <laughs> Deal with them both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, sometimes, Miki, sometimes you've gone to the person and it hasn't been satisfactory. Yeah. But wisdom tells you this is all that can be done at this moment, mm -hmm. okay? I've done my part. Sometimes that's all you need to do. It's a dangerous thing. If I go to another person, it's not a satisfactory result. And then I, I say, well, I need to tell my friend about it, who may tell another friend, who may tell another friend. And I actually take a bad situation and I make it worse and worse and worse. That's yeah. why the words of Jesus in Matthew 18 are, are so appropriate that you go to the person if it is not solved and in your judgment there's still an issue here that needs to be confronted then you go to the next level which means you go to somebody else and say yes. would you go with me yeah. because I am talking with X mm -hmm. and I went to X and they did not receive me well at all would you go with me in, in part not, a, not to gang up on somebody, but, but partly because it's a bit of an inflamed situation. Sure. Would you go and keep me from saying something yeah, stupid? Yeah, almost like a mediator. Almost like a mediator, yeah. that's right. So that, so that we can solve this and you can listen and maybe, maybe you will hear something I didn't hear. Maybe, maybe this person received me better than I thought. So mm -hmm. it's not, you're not trying to gang up on somebody that's who's good. hurt Excellent. your feeling. So you, you're, you're partly saying, it's not been resolved to my satisfaction, but maybe my perception isn't right. I need a third person in here to be a bit of a referee, a bit of a mediator, okay? So number one, you go. And it could be a phone call. It could be an email, although, you know, email communication easily Because you can, can't hear my tone of voice. That's right. I can't see your face. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you don't start with an email. Face-to-face -face is best. Phone call is second best. Email only when there's no other way to say what needs to be said. Sure. In any case, it's not solved. You bring another person in. And I would say between the first step and the second step, in my experience, 98, 99% of the times, time you can come to a good, satisfactory conclusion. But what do you do when it doesn't work then? Yeah. Yeah. What do you, what do, you do? Because here's, here's the, the deal. 
God cares an awful lot yes. about us being reconciled one to another. Yes. In fact, uh, in the scriptures, Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 25. Oh, I was wondering if we were going to get to that absolutely. one. Absolutely. <laughs> pretty serious. If you, let me just read it here. Yeah. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. There are so many people in churches today bringing their gifts of worship and, and right. exhorting the Lord. Or getting up to preach a sermon. And there's all Ooh. sorts of garbage happening right, right. in the heart. What's up with that? Nothing good is what's up with that. <laughs> Nothing good. But I think this is kind of the... Matthew 5 is like the flip side of Matthew 18 because Matthew 18 has the idea that someone has offended you, but Matthew 5 is huge on the other foot. That's right. You know, I've That's been right. a jerk. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've hurt somebody's feelings. Uh, I, have, I have said something, done something that has unnecessarily mm -hmm. offended a brother or sister. I made a promise and I didn't keep it. Uh, I slandered somebody. I made a, a, I made a cheap comment, sort of a... We always like, well, da, 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 da. I'm just, just joking. Uh -huh. Oh, the cruelty yes. that, that passes Very under good. under just, I was just joking. Or I'm just saying. I, I'm just that saying. That phrase. I'm just, <laughs> right, I'm just, how much evil is done by joking or saying, I'm just saying, yeah. as if that gets us off the hook. Right. And Jesus is saying, before you stand up and sing that solo. Come on. Or before you stand up and preach that sermon, preacher. That's good. If yeah. you know and the Holy Spirit has an amazing That's way right. of bringing it to your mind. Before you stand up and preach that sermon or sing that song or teach that Sunday school lesson or put that money in the offering plate, wow. back off, go settle the issue. Yes. God's not interested in you standing up and preaching some great sermon from Ephesians 5 when you've got broken relationships yeah. all over the church. Yeah. Clean up the mess you made then preach the word. And it matters so much to the Lord. It yes. matters so much within our fellowship. And, and it, it has uh, implications in the way that we deal with each other. And I think that if we would implement or work the scriptures as God intended for us to work them, it might not escalate to the point where now we are disconnected. We have decided to cut ourselves off from the body because we have implemented the scriptures, it's, it really is a blueprint for us to live our life. The Bible is not given to cause us more problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible's not the source of our problems. We are the source of our own problems. I mean, wow. James 4 says, you know, what is the source of strife? Is it not within you, your own lust, your own desires? You fight, you kill, and you, 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 you have not because you're angry with each other. Uh, the... the uh, Look in the mirror. <laughs> Were you at, trying to find a nicer way to say that? You just have to say it, right? <laughs> that's right. Look in the mirror. Yeah. We have met the enemy. He is us. Mm -hmm. We are our own worst enemy. And God has given us a way to solve the relational problems that tear us apart. Yeah. But, you know, Mickey, when if you and I are unreconciled, we shouldn't be doing this program. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, we shouldn't be saying, well... It doesn't matter how I treat other people. I'm just going to serve the Lord. Yeah. God says, no, clean up the mess inside your own life. Then we can talk about your relationship with yeah. me. You know, I have, I have been there, even just some of the, the phrases that you're, that you're throwing out. And, you know, I don't think that this is, this is the work of the enemy. So it's, it's common, you know, right. it's not unusual. But I've been there in that I have said, you know what? As long as I have King Jesus, I don't need anyone else. <laughs> and it seems so safe to right. say. It feels easy too. It's so it's easy, easy to right. say. You know, I've had those conversations, and literally, Pastor Ray, I've had those conversations with my husband where I have said, you know what? That's the last time for that. I'm done with this. Right. That, that's the last time for that. But really, when we're in fellowship together, you know, you think of your natural family. Right. And, you know, as thick as that blood is, you cannot cut off that fellowship because your brother or sister gets out of line with you. You are connected. Would you agree that we are to see the body of Christ in the same way? Yes. And, and part of the problem is what First John 3 talks about. How can you love God 
whom you have not oh. seen, if you hate your brother who you have seen. That's why this King Jesus <laughs> yeah. stuff is can be a little bit of a cop out, right? Yeah, because, that's right. You know, we you know we have not seen Jesus in the flesh. That's right. It's our brothers and sisters that we rub up against every day. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, don't talk to me about how wonderful I am if you hate your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. It, uh, the horizontal and the vertical go together. That's a huge challenge for all of us. It is a huge challenge, and you can't deny the element of love that That's is right. uh, thrown out in the scriptures constantly, over and over and over. Uh, Jesus saying that people would know that you're my disciples by the love you have for one another. And so anyway, we're going to deal more with um, church and being disillusioned with church. Mm -hmm. And then once you've made the decision to leave the church, okay. how do you what do, do we that? Do it? Yeah. And what is this new phrase that we've adopted in the body of Christ? Church hopping. Let's talk about that when Miki returns.